What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where you will be learning one of the most important topics in React and that are components. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? You can support the channel on Patreon where you get benefits such as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues where other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. What are components? When it comes to React, components are very important. I've took a screenshot from the official website of Airbnb and even though it hasn't been created in React, it still allows me to showcase what components are. Every website or interface has been made up out of different parts. We've got the bestseller section, we have the make plans this weekend, and we have the groups section. In React, we don't call these sections or parts, but components. If we take a look at them, you can see that the design is exactly the same for every different block. Components allows us to reuse the same DOM structure for different experiences or different data. If we look a bit deeper into the bestseller section, we can basically say that we have a parent component, which is the entire section, but we have many child components inside of it. Right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if we define it in React, you could basically say that we have a bestsellers list, which will contain all items that are the bestsellers, and we have one single bestseller. A common question I get is why should I use components? If we think about the scalability of our project, you don't want to create a block yourself for every single booking item. As you can see right here, it has a total of 375 items. Would you create them yourself? or would you rather put them inside a list and render over all listings? This makes React components reusable and it will save you a lot of time. All right, it's time to create your component and I actually want to start off by using some best practices already. Components are stored inside the source folder right here. And I actually recommend you to create a separate folder with the name components where you only store your components. Let's create a new folder. Let's call it components. Now the main reason why is because it might get clustered at times. So I also recommend you to create your components in Pascal case. This assures that you'll see immediately if a file is a component or not. Later on, we will go deeper into separating components from each other since it's also a good practice to store them in separate folders inside the components folder. All right, so let's create a new component that's not related to the Airbnb example. So right click, new file, and let's call it car list.js. There are two ways in how you could declare components in React. The first method is using a functional component, which is actually pretty straightforward because it's a regular function in JavaScript. You can simply define a keyword function followed with a name of car list. Keep in mind that it's good to keep it the same name as the file. So what we can do is to return a basic string of woohoo. Let's return multiple cars. This is fine, but there's also a second method which is using the ES6 class method. So right outside of our function, let's start off by defining the class car list. Then we need to make sure that we extend it from the abstract class of React. So let's say extends react dot component. And let's add curly braces. It's giving us an error right now because it probably can't find React. So what we can do is to import it. So let's say import react from react. It's still giving us an error because we have to find it twice. So let's comment the first one out, save it. And it's not being used, but it does work. Inside our car list, we need to make sure that we add the only required method inside the class, which is the render method. So let's say render parentheses curly braces. It's throwing an error right now because it's expecting a return value to the page you want to render something on. And you can basically do whatever you want in here. You can return a string, a list, and way more. Let's actually return the same thing that we got above right here. Copy, paste it, and the error is gone. Now I've showed you how you can define both methods, but we haven't really talked about which one you should use. Even though the syntax of the ES6 class method is a bit more, it still performs the same exact thing as the functional component. 
A downside of using the functional component may be the fact that even handling functions are redefined per render. Personally, I would say that using functional components is good when you want to do simple things like rendering, props, since they don't care about lifecycle methods or have their own internal state. Class components, on the other hand, are awesome when you have a requirement with the state of the component. But functional components are a lot more lightweight. But still, it is pretty difficult to say that one is better than the other. I find it a preference thing. If you have state management, I recommend you to use classes. Otherwise, just go with functional classes. Even though it's easier to stick to one method, you will probably be using both of them depending on the situation. I want to work with classes in this tutorial, so let's remove the function that we have above, and you can perform the same exact thing in the function. It really doesn't matter. In order to print it out to the browser, we need to make sure that we export our class. And that's actually pretty straightforward. What we need to do is to go outside of our class and say export, default, followed with the class that you want to export. In our case, it's called car list. Right now, you'll see that the warning is gone because we're actually doing something with our car list. Now, if we save it, it won't show us anything on the React app screen because we haven't done anything with it yet. Now, do you remember that the homepage that we're seeing right now is actually already a component inside the index.js? Right here, it's calling the app component. This means that we can simply replace this app component that we're calling with the car list that we got. This isn't the best way to do it. It's easy to just show you the output in the browser, but what I actually recommend is changing up the app.js file, so basically the component. Let's open it. And what this function is doing is basically showing us the landing screen that we got. So what we can do is basically delete everything that we got in here. And we can basically say, well, create me a div and return the car list. I won't be adding the import statement every single time myself. So from now on, it will be automatically imported by hitting enter. And let's close it off. Now this should do the work for us. Let's save it. Let's navigate to Brave. Let's refresh it. Well, that's been done automatically. And as you can see, woohoo, let's return multiple cars have been printed out. Now let's make this even better. Let's create an array or car models that we then return to the view as list items. Let's navigate back to our car list.js and right above our class, let's define, let's say a let cars is equal to a set of brackets. Inside the brackets, we're going to define array items. So let's say Mercedes, BMW, Audi, Volvo, and the last one is a Porsche. Right now, we are returning a string. What we can do is basically say, well, return cars. As you can see, they have all been printed out. But usually, you want to place these inside a list item or somewhere inside HTML code. So what we can do is to go back and let's say, well, return an unordered list. Inside the unordered list, I want to map my items that I have inside the array. So let's say curly braces, cars, so the array that we got, dot map, which is the map function that we're going to use. Inside the map function, we're going to pass in another set of parentheses. We're going to define the item, comma, index. Then outside of the parentheses, we're going to add a arrow function, curly braces. Then in here, we're basically going to return a list item. Then inside the opening list item, we're going to define a key, which is equal to the index. I don't know where this came from. Let's close it off. All right. Now, inside the list item, we're basically going to define the item or the car. Now, this should work. Let's save it and navigate back. And as you can see, all cars have been printed out inside a list item. This was it for this video. In the next video, we're going to create a child component, which will then communicate with the parent component. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.